You ready, bub? Here's your look at the new Beast Kingdom Wolverine Egg Attack Action Figure. The product code for this release is EAA066SP. This is also the special edition of Wolverine, which will come included with some bonus features like the Logan Howland face and battle damage sentinel head. First thing we're going to do is figure out how tall Wolverine stands. I'm actually going to take it to the top of his mast head. Now you very well could easily swap this out for the Logan head. I'll show you all those interchangeable options in a second. But if you want to measure it to the top of his costumed head, his mast head, you're looking at a figure that stands 7 inches in height. It's right there, my friends, my colleagues. And to those asking for centimeters... You're looking at a figure that's standing 17.8, about centimeters, about 18 centimeters tall. This is pretty cool. He comes included with the same type of display stands that we've seen released with many of the Beast Kingdom releases, the collectible figures that we've looked at. Uh, the shape may be the same, but of course what is drastically different is Wolverine is featured on the front almost as a placard. And then you've got the old, classic, iconic X-Men font across the top. Short of this figure coming with the original 90s X-Men music, this has basically everything I would want right down to that cool font. Loving that. Now, the does have the standard clear clip that's featured on the top there with an adjustable waist clip. So you've got the clear neck. The waist clip does open and close and uh, it just clamps around the figure's waist just like so just get that around his waist just like that of course as beast kingdom releases more of these would love to eventually get you know like i said them all lined up on a shelf each with what i'm guessing will be their still trademark x-men logo on the top with the different name feature on the front of the stands or if you manage to get yourself the special edition, well, you get this pretty cool, you have to admit, Sentinel head that can just sit on your shelf. It's got some fantastic paint to this. Just a hark back to the old classic Sentinels from the cartoons and comic books done in this beautiful purple with this airbrushing of darker, almost like a black that they've run across almost the crowned area of its helmet. It's got many a cracks, many exposed areas in which you can kind of see the mechanics of the Sentinel underneath. Again, just loving, loving the coloring of this guy. Uh, the eye does not light up. Almost, it kind of gives you the indication that it should light up, but if the light hits it just right, it almost seems to glow all on its own. You can see these severed off components, the cablings that would have connected itself to its torso. Again, it's uh, the bottom side is completely flat because this is going to be something that's going to sit on a shelf. And it's a, it is more of a softer, uh, cushioned sort of display base. The only problem is with getting Wolverine on it, uh, there is no pegs, nor is there a, a section where you can clip that same clear post to it. So really when you are displaying the figure on it, it's sort of more a case just of balancing the figure on top. If you get the place just right, you can get the feet to stay firmly planted on it. But he is very prone to sliding off. One of the workarounds I had kind of was just sort of having the foot resting against one of the, the square pieces, I should say, at the very top of the sentinel head. 
I kind of wish there was a better way to display this guy on the Sentinel. Um, I guess you could kind of have it front front faced, but then you lose all the cool essence of being able to look at the side of this, the, the very cool, very fallen Sentinel head here. Actually, while we are talking about the special edition, the special edition also includes the growling Logan head portrait, which as you can see is pretty much the same as this one right here, other than the fact he's got the grimmest mouth. The hair seems to be identical to one another. The paint also seems identical to one another. Uh, the thing also with these ones, which is really cool, you probably see a slightly crooked eye on this one, is because either one of them, whether you get the one with the special edition exclusive, or you get the standard release one. Both of them, you just pop the head off, take the Wolverine trademark hairstyle off. You can then also open this up, and inside, you've got little joysticks that can control the eye movement. Uh, moving the joysticks left and right will also move the eyeballs left and right. You can move them up, you can move them down, you can move them all the way around, and again, that's a, just a really neat touch. I like stuff like this. The hardest element of all of this would be just trying to figure out which way you want to display the Wolverine. I mean, I'm always the trade, kind of the purist when it comes to Wolverine. I always like just displaying him with the uh, the hood on, the mask on. But again, with Beast Kingdom, they give you a couple of variations, a couple of different ways to present the figure. I love the special edition version of this guy that does have the grimmest teeth. But like I said, if you look at them next to each other, side by side, the left to the right, you'll see that they are pretty much identical to one another, other than really just the grimmest mouth. Again, pretty cool. Uh, speaking of cool also, one other thing that they also give you is the folded down mask. A nice way to obviously, if you're going to be displaying the figure with either one of these head portraits, Obviously, the mask has to go somewhere. It just doesn't poof, just disappear into nothingness. The mask has to be folded down, and they give you a little extra piece to do that. So we can go ahead and take the head off. Just pop it off of its ball joint like that. Yes, the body is also wrapped in material. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second as well. I uh, just want to show you the two standard released heads. There they are right there, side by side. Yeah, I know it's... Eyes a little crooked. Let's fix that. Don't want to be looking at a crooked eye for the rest of this review. Let's bring that up. There we go. All right. Let's put that back in place. Uh, then also when you're lining it up to the hair, it doesn't seem like it matters which hair that you use because they are the same to one another. Just line that up, pop it down, and it's actually easier if you kind of tilt it back when you put the hair piece down. Wolverine with a hair piece. Just before I actually show you what it looks like with that head in place, one thing that's really neat about this head sculpt too is it also gives you the screaming Wolverine, the angrier expressioned Wolverine. And to do that, we're just going to pop this off. There's a little tab connector point. You basically get connecting right behind the nose to right behind the nose piece of the mask. And then you're going to take the growling Wolverine mouth. It doesn't have to be growling. It could just be berserker mouth you just plug that in place like so and you've got yourself two variations of the wolverine portrait the one with the mask that is if you manage to get the standard release by the way both of these are included and uh just to give you once again a good close quick look love the detailing on the mask i also like that they gave you a texturing to it i don't, don't know if you hopefully the camera and lighting will do it justice but you almost see like these little perforations these little indentations there on the side of the mask. Really love these. So if we want to change out Wolverine's head piece, we're going to go ahead and first add the mask. That just slides onto the back, just like so. Couldn't be easier than that. And then whatever head you decide to go with, just put that ball joint in place. You'll get a very satisfying snap. And now you've got Wolverine with a Logan hair or Logan head piece. And again, you can go with either one of those. So let's talk a little bit about this figure, then we're gonna touch base on his hands. Uh, again, you've got Wolverine in his classic yellow and blue outfits with the, the also the trademark red banded belt with the X logo feature on the front. Now this is all material. I'm very happy to see that they're using a material to kind of cover over. It's a great way also to finish off the figure where it hides a lot of the ball joints, all the areas of 
articulation that you would normally see in this figure if it was just all in plastic. Love the fact though again that they add a material over top of that. The striping of course is very familiarly present here on Wolverine. You've got the black striping there on the sides as well as on the top and his trademark Wolverine boots that almost have a very similar pointed off place as his mask. You ever notice that? Some striping also down to the front of the feet. Again, there's the undersides of his feet. A really, really nice representation of Wolverine. Now, of course, you couldn't have Wolverine. Oh, oh, before we continue any bit further than that, I want to talk also about his shoulder pads. Somebody got just so anxious that I was going to start talking about his claws in a second. Uh, he does also have the, uh, the shoulder pads here, which I might also add are a softer plastic. I like that they've attached them to the shoulder area and rather not to the top of his torso. That means when you are moving the arms up, the, uh, the shoulder pads kind of go with it. And even when you move the arms out, you can kind of compensate it by hinging that back. It kind of finishes off. You don't really have any areas in which you now start seeing a gap. You just want to bring that back over. There are his defaulted hands, as you can see. You get the little silver tubes in which the claws, the adamantium claws, would project their ways out. Uh, the defaulted hands, of course, have those. You can then also swap it out for a pair of kind of grasping hands, gripping hands. Or if you want to have kind of Wolverine looking as if he's going to be leaping or grabbing, he has those types of hands. But I'm sure most people will probably want to gravitate towards these hands, the ones that have the adamantium claws. You just plug those right into place. Couldn't be any bit simpler than that. These are working on ball joints after all, so you just pop that right off. Find the appropriate hand, thumbs go in of course, and then plug that into place. And now you've got Wolverine with some weapons in his hand, or more importantly, he is the weapon. And he has the claws in his hand. Uh, when you are moving the hands, the parts of the gloves do come off, so you just want to be careful of that. And just pop that into place. And like I said, you've got Wolverine there all ready and posed to go. Even though, again, this isn't necessarily going to be the way I'm going to display the figure. I mean, I love the, the fact and the options that Beast Kingdom make available for this particular release of Wolverine. Defaulted, though, I might be more inclined to probably display him with this head portrait, I think, rather than this one. But I mean, it's, it is very, very much tempting to want to get a second one of these so that you can display Wolverine in his two iconic looks. Let's talk a little bit about this guy's posability. So as good as this guy is looking, he is just as good in posing. Now his head rotates all the way around. One thing that is a bit of a problem is because the hood, the mask area folds back, Sometimes when you are using this heads, you'll find a lot of the times either the side of his pork chop sideburns will either get caught here or they'll get caught on the sides of the shoulders. Probably quite evident as you can see as I'm rotating the head back and forth. This might be also one of the benefits of these being softer plastic. Sort of gets, in, gets out of the way if you are moving the figure back and forth. As you can see, these move completely out of the way and give you a little bit of clearance, but they will clip. It's There's no real way around it. As you're moving the head back and forth, yeah, they do clip a little bit on the shoulders. Uh, the arms hinge out, and uh, you can also move them forward and back. They're a little on the clickety side when you are rotating the arms back and forth. He does also have the arm hinge, or the crunch happening in the front of the shoulders. So that means you can also bring the arms a little bit more in than what you would normally be able to do with figures like this. He has a swivel at the bicep. He has not one, but two hinges happening in the elbow. And he also has that ball joint happening in the hand. Upper torso has the ball joint. Lower torso has a ball joint. So up at the top there, right there, probably right where you can see my thumb following it around, there is that ball joint. And then there's that secondary ball joint happening down below. The legs hinge out, forward and back. Did I mention I also love the fact that these have fabric costumes over top of the bodies? Yeah, I know, I already said that. Swivel at the top, cut of the thigh, double hinge happening on the knee. Uh, you can't really move the, the boot section back and forth, but most definitely you can move the feet all the way around. There is the ankle pivot back and forth, 
and he does also have toe articulation happening as well. This Wolverine has toe articulation. All around a really great looking figure. No matter how you slice it, you see what I did right there, whether you want to display him with the standard X-Men display stand, which I like, or if you want to incorporate, like I said, the Sentinel head as another option to display the figure. Any way you slice it, wasn't probably good the first time around. Uh, this is a great release from the folks over at Beast Kingdom. I must say there's something rather charming to the egg attack action figures that Beast Kingdom produces. Sort of a super stylized rendition of the comic characters that we know and love. Uh, all the care and detail have been put into these figures right down to the fact that they have now fabric costumed outfits and interchangeable heads. With Wolverine here, not only do you just get his defaulted masked head, but you also get yourself a Logan portrait and you also get yourself the Logan howling face. Uh, also, if you manage to pick up the special edition release of this one, of course, also included will be the Sentinel head, which is, I guess, the only one thing I wish that they could have done differently, putting a, some place on it that could have properly supported the figure. Ideally, if I have multiples of the different X-Men characters all under the Egg Attack action banner, I would certainly most definitely want to probably be putting them in a display stand, probably what you're seeing here in Final Looks. Each of the figures, however, if they do get something unique, like Sentinel parts, then I probably would want it to be displaying them more so with a big epic diorama. And I just wish that the figure could have stood a little bit better onto the Sentinel head. I mean, you can try it out and trial and error, you'll eventually get a good place, a good spot where Logan will be able to properly stand on the Sentinel. I just wish that there was a, an actual grooved location where the feet can firmly plant in place so that poor Wolverine will not fall off the Sentinel. Uh, anyway, you slice it three times a charm. Uh, this is a great release from the folks over at Bee's Kingdom. If you guys are interested, in picking up the X-Men Wolverine Special Edition, you should be able now to find them in local comic book stores and online stores alike. Today we were having a look at the new Beast Kingdom. This was product code EAA066SP. This was the X-Men Wolverine, and this was the Special Edition release of him. You guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Beast Kingdom reviews? Don't blame you. There's a playlist on this channel specifically called Beast Kingdom. You can check out all the reviews that I've done for Beast Kingdom. So anything future coming out from this company, you'll also find it in that playlist as well. Make sure as well, my friends and Bunkos alike, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos like this or completely different to this will be coming soon to this channel. So stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time.